Uh, hi, uh, welcome guys. So in this video, uh, what? So, so the, goal, uh, the goal in this video is called uh, can I, uh, to prove that every matrix is, uh, I mean, every uh, matrix, uh, if all the character, all the uh, eigenvalue uh, inside the field F can always be uh, written as the, there's a basis such that the written as upper triangular matrix. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, write down the goal. Okay, so let me just write that goal. Okay, so the, the goal, okay, so the goal is that, uh, so uh, right, So suppose you give a matrix, which is uh, Fn, basically it's basically N, dime, uh, N times N uh, field, uh, matrix with field F, and, uh, and all the eigenvalues, all of the eigenvalues uh, of uh, A is in F. So uh, for example, if you choose uh, your field to be complex number, then ensure that every eigenvalue of the complex matrix is still complex number because the theorem of fundamental algebra, then the, there is a uh, another matrix C in that is Fn, such that the uh, CAC inverse is upper triangle or upper triangular. So it looks like a zero, G, uh, sorry, it's still like, like, like a lambda one, lambda two, lambda n, and all these are all zeros. So basically it's only triangle, okay. Yeah, so this is the first canonical form. So what, I'm, what basically saying that uh, there is always a basis such that every linear transformation can be written as upper triangle. Uh, the technical uh, assumption is that all eigenvalues of A should in F. Okay, so proof. Okay, so this is uh, the proof. So the proof uh, is very, uh, very a uh, little bit lengthy. So uh, we should start from some lemma. Okay, so remember, uh, so we already talked about subspace, right? So if W is a subspace of V, and then we say that, uh, let me just definition. So we say that uh, uh, W is T invariant. Okay, so it means that you can talk about a uh, image of T restricting on W. So basically it's the TW, basically it's all the vectors uh, act on T, TV such that V belongs to W. Okay, so invariant means that if uh, TW is just W. Or, or, or okay, so I think usually it's uh, just TW is a subset of W, then we talk call that this is invariant. So in particular TW equals W is also in, uh, invariant, right? So it's, if T has inverse, then sure that TW will equal to W. Okay, this is just definition, right? So the lemma uh, is the key points that uh, if you get that W uh, in, inside V, right? And the uh, W is T invariant. Uh, so the key idea is that W is T invariant there, right? Then I can, the key idea is that we already say that uh, uh, one can consider another vector space by consider W quotient V. So what I'm claiming that if, 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 if in special case that W is T invariant, then you can construct another matrix T bar such that you downgrade this uh, linear map from V to V to V quotient W to V quotient W. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is that uh, your T is V from V, and then if W is T invariant, then you can construct T bar such that uh, V quotient W go, go to T. T quotient W. Okay, and the construction is basically uh, from, so every vector in W quotient, V quotient W will be X plus W, right? So this map map into T bar X, I think map to uh, map to TX, uh, TX is V plus W. Now you see the definition. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I can always uh, define this, right? So the problem is that I want to prove that this uh, is uh, this is actually T bar is actually the linear transformation. <laughs> so I think it's up to it's easy, right? Because uh, uh, let's see. So if you get x plus y in W, then uh, you get a T of x plus T of y, right? Plus W, right? So this is the same as T of x plus W plus T of W y plus W, right? Because W is a uh, uh, W, so W plus W is W, right? This is the set of the vector. Okay, so, and also uh, T bar uh, AX, 
plus W is just by definition defined to be T A X plus W, which is just A T X plus W, right? So yeah, so A T X just A T bar uh, X right, plus W because uh, A W is just also the same as W, right? Because W is a subspace. Okay, so this tell you that uh, this T bar is a linear transformation. But the problem is that uh, uh, we still need to prove it's uh, well defined. Okay, so well defined means that uh, so in uh, v quotient w x x uh, x plus w same as y plus w means that uh, x minus y is, belongs to w. Okay, so we need to prove that the, the map the mapping will be just uh, consistent, right? So this map into t x uh, plus w. This is t y plus w. Right, so we should have these two, right? But this is natural because x minus w belong x minus y belongs w, so t x minus y belongs to w, so t x minus t y belongs to w, so t x plus w equals to t y plus w. Okay, so this relation is the same as implies this relation. Okay, so now uh, we'll prove our lemma. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, so now uh, uh, let's consider. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the lemma one. And the, another lemma I want to talk about is that, uh, I might want to talk about that. So uh, now we have this, right? So so we can ask what is the minimum polynomial of this T-bar, okay? So uh, if, it, if, it, if P1X is the minimum polynomial of T-bar, and uh, your p of x from uh, it's a linear, it's a minimum polynomial. It's a minimum polynomial of original t. And I claim that the uh, p one x will be the uh, factor of p of x, or p one x divides p of x. Okay. And this is obvious. Uh, okay, so yeah, so this is uh, we need to prove it. But uh, but uh, then, then that's us see uh, see the reasons. Suppose I let I write v bar equals to v plus w, right? So then the uh, so and I so I know that t v t bar v bar uh, will be uh t v plus w, right? That's, I mean to be stupid, right? And then you can so you can easily check that t if you go to t bar square v bar, right? Since it's T bar is a w, w is a T a very an invariant, right? So it becomes T square V plus W, right? So T bar N V bar is also T N plus V T N V plus W. Okay, which you makes uh tell you that if you uh times a zero or a one up to a n such that this coefficient corresponding to the minimum polynomial T, then the then the this will become also become zero. Okay. So what I'm saying is that, uh, so from, from this, you know that this TK, okay, so if you so if you see here, right? So if you, uh, yeah, so TNV plus W equals to TN bar NV. So which tell you that if you go to T bar, uh, your T bar K, make a bar, it's the same as you do the bar and the K, right? So if you have a minimum polynomial such that uh, P of T is zero, then you can easily check it's, Check this will directly implies that the p, uh, p t bar is zero. Okay, the reason is that uh, yeah. So if all these are zeros, uh, by some, uh, linear combination, then the left will be zero. Right. So if t is zero, then sure it's induced will be zero. Okay. So uh, so p of t was zero equals to p t bar uh, equals zero. Okay. So, which tell you that p one t bar. Oh, sorry, the minimum polynomial t called p1 will uh, divide p of x, right? Because any, uh, because, uh, yeah, okay. No, be, uh, because that, uh, yeah, because, uh, yeah, I mean, you just start from here and you put, and you, and then you, you, you take a bar and you put from here, right? So uh, let's let's maybe uh, write write some words. So suppose that you get the 
uh, you guys, the uh, p t bar equals zero, right? So for uh, let's say p belongs to uh, f break x, right? Then your uh, or, or maybe wait, okay, so maybe uh, maybe let's let's say this. So so we we say that p y is a minimum polynomial, minimum polynomial of t bar, and the uh, p is the minimum polynomial. Of t, right? So this means that uh, so suppose that uh, suppose you 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 get another uh, q of x belongs to uh, f break x such that the uh, q uh, q t bar, right? So you 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 can you talk about q t bar equals zero. Okay, then the, by definition, uh, your this set that your because this is minimum, right? So p one will should divide q. Okay. Uh, but uh, but what, uh, what we are proving is that the uh, what we are proving is that the uh, what we are proving is that the suppose uh, since, since p is a minimum polynomial of t right so who should tell you that uh, this p t bar will be zero right so this p bar is a special case of q so we tell you that uh, p one divides p right by definition. Uh yeah, this comes from uh p one t equals zero. You will apply this. So this is why uh this is why uh why I say this uh will sentence will give will give uh give you this. Yeah, this is just some problem. Okay, so theory. So okay, so now we start. We can prove the theory. Okay, so the theory is that uh if t belongs to a v, a v just uh all the linear transformation, and the uh, all the eigenvalues. All the eigenvalues of t inside f, and the t has an arbitrary angular form. Yeah, or well, basically, uh, one can find a linear transformation. Uh, if linear transformation such that t is similar to arbitrary angular. Form. Okay, so basically, uh, triangle, triangle. Uh, okay, so proof. Uh, let's call it. Let's by induction. Okay, so induction is uh let's take let's let's take only one right. So I can take I can pick up the one uh like a vector of of t, and uh, define a span. Let's say we pick some like a vector w, a v, and then call it this span is w. Okay. So uh yeah I mean so let's okay so we should do the induction. So first step should should first say that uh, if dimension of uh v is one then it's trivial right. So uh, suppose suppose any uh, vector space with dimension uh, v f let's say equals to n minus one is okay. Then uh, so we, we need to check that uh, dimension v for f uh, for n dimension right. So for n dimension we pick up dimension uh, span v equals to w. So v is uh, some special eigenvector, some eigenvector of, of v, and uh, we can use the lemma right. Right. So this lemma tell tell me what. Uh, tell me that uh, I can downgrade this T2, right? So suppose, right? So uh, suppose V1, V2 up to Vn, right? So I can, it's the, uh, uh, I mean, it should be the eigenvector of it, right? But it's not generally, it's not generally you can find an eigenvector. So I should say it's a basis of, it's basis of T, right? But the, uh, but fine that I can, there, I can always choose V1 to be some eigenvector, right? Because any, Matrix at least has some one one eigenvalue, I one eigenvalue. So I downgrade into T bar, right? So by theorem that T bar tell me that uh, T bar is a V quotient W, right? And then we prove that the V quotient W is uh, just dimension V minus one. So by the uh, by the lemma, right? So by the lemma tell me that there is a basis such that uh, T bar V two uh, such there. So I I can pick a basis of this V quotient. Uh, this t bar v two bar, such that by uh, by the way, v two bar is v two plus w, right? So I now I downgrade to uh, this small vector space. So in this vector space, this t two bar looks like t bar two, uh, t t bar v two bar is uh, let's say alpha two two v two bar, and the uh, t bar v three bar is like alpha three two v two bar, alpha three three v three bar, and also uh t bar v m bar 
is alpha n to v2, alpha n3 v3 bar, up to alpha n and v n bar. Okay, so this tells me that this t bar should look like uh, still be the uh, upper triangle, right? So we can write it as a, maybe this, yeah, maybe this is uh, alpha 3 3, alpha 3 2, uh, yeah, this, and all these are zeros. Okay, so this is the uh, T bar, right? But okay, so now, uh, now, but this is by by the by induction, right? So by induction, one can write T bar in the small vector space dimension v minus one as this, right? So finally, I need to recover T. Okay, but this is easy, right? Because the the thing I didn't write is some v one, right? Is some v one. So so what what we are what actually what we are proving is that uh, so right so let's say so you you get t two v two bar is alpha two two v two right so this is this is what what this is what you get okay but this is the same as this is actually just say that the t bar v two bar minus alpha two two v two bar belongs to w. Okay, so that means it must be something, something, right? Times V1. Oh, sorry, should, 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 should replace this. So if you uh, go back to original vector space, tell that TV2 minus alpha to the V2 will be something V1, right? Because you are in quotient W, so anything in W looks zero. Okay, so then, the, so you get this, right? But this just tell you your TV2 equals to alpha two two V2 plus something V1. And uh, similarly, your TV3 will be something V2, something, uh, you, you will be something V2, something V3 plus V1, right? And then your TV4 will be something V4, something V3, something V2 plus something V1, right? So if you write in a T as this way, then basically the, uh, and then you also have TV1 equals to, let's say lambda one V1, right? So this is the eigenvalue. So you get lambda one and something, 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 and uh, and also something, 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 something. But these are all zeros. These are all zeros. Right, these are all zeros. So you get this. So now uh, your your. Uh, yeah, your induction work, right? Because you fall, you you still you 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 recover. You first get your induction. You use your induction assumption on your t bar, and uh, you go back to t. So in this case, that your t is still upper is still upper triangle. Uh, sure. Yeah. So the upper triangle. So this is the the key idea. Okay. So the proof is done. Okay. So uh, yeah, so basically what we are proving is that there is this basis or let's say the basis transformation or there is this a C such that in Fn and uh, such that uh, given any mat uh, matrix, you can always find uh, C inverse AC such that uh, this is the upper triangle. So all this can be non-zero uh, and all these are zeros. Okay, so this is the canonical form. Basically every matrix, can be written as the upper triangle form. Okay. Yeah, this is the first. Okay. So finally, we need to. Uh, I want to use a give the final consequence. Okay. So this is consequence basically the the Kelly Hamilton. Okay. So this is the famous theorem. Uh, yeah. Kelly Hamilton. Okay. But the basically how how. Well, what we uh, what saying is that uh, if a you get a right equals to uh, some matrix and what or linear transformation and then want to prove that the minimum polynomial so the minimum polynomial of a so we, we proved it we prove we first in a, in a general uh, situation of any vector space we generally say that the minimum polynomial is basically at most degree of the vector space. But, but this is matrix, right? So the, the results can be uh, can be get the uh, can get more uh, stronger. So the minimum polynomial of a, the, the degree of the minimum polynomial a, the most. Uh, okay, so usual is not n square, right? This is very important because you and because we proved that the dimension of harm v v, or basically the dimension of a, 
f v is basically n squared. Actually, uh, the minimum polynomial degree of minimum polynomial of a at most. N. Okay, the idea is that uh, by our results, right? By our results, by our lemma, or this triangular, uh, this triangle, uh, triangular results, I can find, I can find the v one, v n basis such that t u one is lambda one v one. You, you don't care about lambda one is what lambda one maybe eigenvector or, or 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 something. Who cares? And TV2 maybe lambda can be written as lambda two V2 plus something, right? So let's say alpha two one V1. And then also you get your T V I equals to uh equals what? Or maybe a TVN equals to your uh lambda V N. And uh yeah, it can be like a uh alpha one v one, alpha n two v two. Up to alpha n uh n minus one v n minus one. So basically, what I'm saying is that you just write and write your t into this diagonal one, or oh, sorry, this upper triangular. Okay. And then uh, notice that this tell me that the t minus lambda one v one is zero, right? But uh, you see that uh, if uh, but okay. So this is the first equation. Second equation tell you what? Tell you that the t minus lambda to v two. Uh, it's basically alpha to one v one, right? But this tell you that uh, if you times another t minus lambda one, you get t minus lambda one, t minus lambda two v two zero, right? Because in the right hand side, something x on v one. Okay, and also these operators, this t minus lambda one, t minus lambda two, x on v one is also zero, right? Because these two are commun commune itself. Okay, so you can keep going, right? So obviously, finally, you'll get t minus lambda one, t minus lambda two. Up to t minus down the n, which is zero, right? Account for any v, so any vector space v. So for uh, for all the bases, so v one, v two, up to v n, right? But this this is a linear operator, right? So if you account all the bases zero, uh, then it means that uh, it maps the account v zero, which tell you that uh, it is it is zeros. So t minus down one, t minus down two. Right, down the n is zero. Okay, so that means at most degree. N. Okay, so uh, so we are not guaranteed that uh, it must be degree n, right? Because uh, so there's there might be a case that uh, once you get this, then you already done everything, right? The third equation, the fourth equation, up to n equations can be can give you the same information. Uh, may give you the same information of of this. Right, so so what what you can finally get that your your sort of minimum polynomial degree uh, the degree of the minimum polynomial is not only at most n but actually divides n divides n right because your minimum polynomial is p one this p one always is just the uh, it's always uh, divides the this t minus on that one right t minus on that sorry I should press x. So your your uh your degree must divide. Okay. Okay. So notice the key idea is uh notice the very very important idea is that uh, your field your field uh your i all eigenvalue must sit inside f. Okay. So this guarantee that you can always at least find the first one and do induction. Okay, so yeah, so more generally, so 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 more generally, the story looks like a if you're working in a in a general field, right? So it, it's not guaranteed that your eigenvalues, your eigenvalues were inside f, right? So for example, if you're talking about this, and uh, you can solve the eigen equation is lambda squared plus one, right? So your lambda is plus or minus i, right? So in this case. Your your if you only talk about real numbers, then your eigenvalue do not see inside this. So in the usual, uh, so in dealing with such a matrix, so usually uh, what people can do is that uh, you can add a joint this all the eigenvalue inside F. So you are so and uh, extend into splitting field, splitting field of uh, F, right? So you can find the uh, K n, which is a, a field extension. Such so as extend this f and all this uh, still big guy uh, going to this, and then in k n right so in k n that you have the upper triangular form, and then in some special case that you can still re re reduce this 
uh, our triangle form into a usual F. Okay, but this is not the uh, not generally can be done. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, hope you guys like this. So this is the first canonical form, and the next time, uh, we talk about uh, we may talk about the uh, nilpotent transformation, and then talking about invariant of nilpotent, which is the I think the most difficult part in linear algebra. Okay, see you guys next videos. Bye bye.